So now we're going to cover how to make a function in Python that will use the turtle graphics in order to draw a polygon of a specified number of sides. So I'm not going to follow the code in the example exactly. I'm just going to kind of write it by hand. As always, in order to get turtle graphics to run, we will import the turtle class. And then we will create our turtle object. Now that we have a turtle object, we can use it to draw a shape, like a square, for example. So I'm going to make a variable called angle, and I'm going to set it to 90. And I will draw the square now. So let's see. Turtle is equal to turtle dot turtle. I'm not liking that. Let's um, give it a different name. Leo, one of the Ninja Turtles, Leonardo. Okay, so Leo dot forward. Let's make him go forward 200 pixels. Then let's make him turn right our angle. Since this is a square, we're using 90 degree angles. And then I'm going to repeat those so that we're doing a total of four rotations. We go forward 200 and we turn right. We go forward 200, we turn right. We go forward 200, we turn right. We go forward 200, we turn right. So let's see if it works. Now do not ever call your script turtle.py. I'm going to call this one polygon.py, even though it doesn't draw a polygon yet. Well, a square is a polygon after all, though. There we go. So we get our polygon. It drew a polygon. Now, in our instructions, we actually had this inside a function where we passed our turtle in. So I think our function looks something like this. I'm going to put it above where we declare our turtle. You need to find a function with the DEF keyword. I'm going to call it draw square. And we pass in my turtle. And we pass in the side length. And then every function definition ends in a colon. And every time we get a colon, we start in dinning. So instead of going forward to 100, I'm going to go forward the length specified in side length. It's just spacing out the text a little bit to make it easier to read. I know that the videos, it's hard to read the text. Okay, so we go forward side length amount of space. And then we turn right the angle. Side length the amount of space, we turn right the angle. 90 degree angle. Now when I was moving things around, my angle definition got lost. It's down here where it doesn't do any good. Why? Because it's no longer inside the function. So I need to cut that and I need to paste that as well at the same indention level. Alrighty, there we go. So now we need to call the draw square function. Draw square, I'm going to pass in my turtle, and I want side lengths of 200, just like we had before. Let's make sure this runs. Looks like it does. Looks like we're good to go. Okay, to make this draw a polygon of an arbitrary number of sides, we actually need this to loop. And if we look at it, what it's doing is it's repeating this code four times. There's a couple of different ways of writing loops in Python. There's the for, and then there's the while. I'm going to show while. So let's set a variable equal to four. Sides is equal to four. Then we can have a counter 
which counts which side we are on. I'm just going to call it counter. Right now, counter is set to 1. We're drawing the first side. While counter is less than or equal to the total number of sides, and a while loop, the declaration of ends, ends in a colon, so everything has to be indented in that as well. Now I can actually indent things more than one line at a time. You can just highlight a whole bunch of stuff and then choose format indent and it'll move it over or format dedent and it'll move it the other way. That would have been faster. And as always, when all the indention stops, the function is over. We could put a return statement down at the bottom just to mark that it's the end of the function, but it's not necessary because this is not a fruitful function. It doesn't return a value. Okay, let's make sure this works. Okay, now this is silly. I made a mistake here. I don't need to repeat all four of these things four times. I just need to repeat one of them four times. So there we go. We go forward, we turn right, and then we increase our counter. Counter is equal to counter plus one, which we could also rewrite as counter plus equals one. Either syntax is valid. Now I think that this is ready for prime time. We run it, we run the module. Okay. Now that worked. Now we've almost got our draw polygon function already. Just one more thing to do. How do we calculate this 90 degree angle if it's a square? And if it's a triangle, it's 120. So just think, if it's a triangle, we have three sides at 120 degrees. If it's a square, we have four sides at 90 degrees. We can kind of see a pattern here. Three at 120. If you multiply those together, you get 360 degrees. 4 at 90, again, if you multiply those together, you get 360 degrees. So the angle for a square, we could redefine. Instead of it being 90, we can make it 360 divided by the number of sides. I'm going to move this comment because this is no longer applicable to a square in particular. What makes it square is the fact that it has four sides. Okay. There we go. So we have our draw square function. It looks a little bit different. Actually, it looks quite a bit different than the one that was in homework 6a. But that's okay. We are well on our way towards making this a draw polygon function. In order to get it to be a draw polygon function, all we have to do is add one more parameter. I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup here. I hope that doesn't make it too hard to read. I'm going to add a comment loop to draw all, draw all the sides. So draw polygon will be almost the exact same code except we are going to pass in the number of sides as a parameter to the function. So instead of draw square, let's call it draw polygon. The first argument is still going to be my turtle. The second one is still going to be side length. But now we have a third parameter called sides. So when we call draw polygon, we will specify the number of sides that we want it to draw. A four-sider, it would draw a square, a three-sider. It'll draw a triangle, and so on. So now I'm just going to copy everything from the angle calculation all the way down to the return. And I'm going to paste it there. So here's our new code, from there to there. This should actually be ready to go. I don't see any other changes I need to make to it, but we can test it out and find out. Draw a polygon. I'm going to still, still going to pass in our turtle named Leo. Maybe I want it to be a little bit different size. I'm going to make the sides 300. And I want a three-sided polygon, which is a triangle. And since I know the draw square function works, I'm just going to comment that out. Now let's test it and see. 
And that seems to work. It worked with a three-sider. Let's try a hexagon. I'm going to change that to six. Okay, the side length needs to be decreased the more angles we add. So I'm going to make it like 150 pixels per side. All I did is change that to 150. Run this. There we go. So now we have a draw polygon function right there. And we have the function call which invokes it. And the function accepts three parameters. And it uses those parameters. The first one. All right, something is odd here. I made a mistake, and I'm surprised that this worked. This should actually be my turtle dot forward, my turtle dot right, and the same down here. This should be my turtle dot forward, my turtle dot right. The only reason this is work was working is I suppose that once we declared Leo down here and then invoked the function, it was available to those functions, which I'm surprised about. So now that is correct, but I have to test it just to make absolutely sure. And the reason why we needed to do that is since we're passing in the turtle as a, an argument, as a parameter, then that's the one that I want to be using. Because what if I change the name of this? What if I'd called this Alex? And then I ran it. The code that I had there that called it Leo, here and here, would no longer work if I changed it back to the way that it was. Because now we no longer have a turtle called Leo anywhere in the program. And so that's why we get an error. Leo is not defined. So that was a mistake. Let's change this back to my turtle. Run it one more time just to make sure that I'm turning in a good program. Oops. I still left Leo somewhere. Ah, right there. Now that I've created Alex, that's what I need to pass in to draw a polygon. And the name of the turtle doesn't matter. I think in our example, we just called it T. T is a bit of a boring name. But we can call it anything we want. Because once we are inside the function, we will instead be using the myTurtle parameter to indicate our turtle. So what did this illustrate? Well, this assignment illustrates the creation of a function. We define the function with the DEF keyword. We create some parameters that we have to fill in with values when we call it. And it illustrates a while loop. The way the while loop works is that as long as this condition is true, it continues to repeat. Like an if statement, except it repeats it rather than just running it once. And in order to get it to exit the while loop, you also have to change your counter to make sure that eventually your condition becomes false. Otherwise, it's an infinite loop and it will draw it over and over and over. We might be able to demonstrate that. I'm going to set the turtle speed a lot slower so that we can see that happening. T.speed. OK. Now that I'm no longer incrementing the counter, adding one to it, this will never become false. So it will never leave the file loop. Very, very good. A draw hex. Whoops. It's still doing it. And it'll keep doing this until I turn off the computer or cancel the program because it's an infinite loop. An infinite loop is one in which the while condition never becomes false. Obviously, that's not what I want. So I'm going to fix this by uncommenting that line. And I really want the turtle to go as fast as possible rather than slow because I'm impatient today. So I'm going to change it to t.speed0. 1 is the slowest, and then as the numbers get larger, it gets faster and faster. But if you set it to 0, then uh, perhaps counterintuitively, that's the fastest possible speed for the turtle. 
there we go. If you want to know more about turtles, there are online references. One that I recommend is an online textbook called How to Think Like a Computer Scientist in Python. And in particular, the chapter over turtles is called Hello, comma, Little Turtles. So if you type that into Google or whatever, it'll bring up how to think like a computer scientist learning Python 3. And you can learn a lot more about turtles there. All right, this assignment's ready to upload.